Hey there guys, how are you doing and welcome back to our channel. Everyone enjoys a happy ending and The Weeknd's tale is one that inspires us. The Canadian performer was homeless for a while before rising to fame and then performing at the Super Bowl. The Weeknd, whose actual name is Abel Chisfaye, performed a mashup of his most renowned songs at the recent Super Bowl 55. I Feel It Coming and Blinding Lights were among the songs he sang. Now let's have a look at how The Weeknd went from homeless to successful. Number 5. Difficult Past He became a street child in the Scarborough suburbs after a difficult upbringing. He discussed the significance of music in his life, saying, I really thought a film was going to be my way out, but I couldn't really make a movie to feel better, you know? Music was very direct therapy. It was immediate and people liked it. It definitely saved my life. Number 4. No roof over his head. Tesfaye used to share an apartment with two friends that was supplied by welfare assistance. They would steal food simply to eat, and they would sometimes sell drums to get by till the end of the month. When they had to leave the flat, the only way they could stay warm was to sleep on the sofas of different friends. He would sometimes hook up with females to find a place to stay. Number 3. College Dropout The weekend never went to college. In truth, the singer didn't even complete high school, leaving out at the age of 17 to pursue a career in music. Despite his musical abilities, The Weeknd pondered pursuing a career in filmmaking before realizing that music served as a kind of therapy for him, as shown by the fact that it saved his life while he was getting into more severe problems in high school. The Weeknd dropped out of high school at the age of 17 to focus solely on his music career. Because the two didn't have a plan, the weekend spent the following five to six years homeless, either living in a vehicle or hopping about and sleeping on his friends' sofas. Number 2. Separation of Parents He spent much of his childhood with his mother when his parents divorced when he was young, and he lived with his grandmother until he was five years old, where she taught him Amharic, Ethiopia's national language. The weekend walked out of his mother's house without being noticed after persuading a friend to join him, claiming, we grabbed our mattresses from our parents, threw it in our friend's shady van, and left one weekend and never came back. Despite his father's absence from his life, The Weeknd grew up surrounded by other family members and the music of their homeland, which The Weeknd credits as a huge influence on the music he creates today. Number 1. Successful Music Career 2009-2013 to The Weeknd started anonymously uploading songs on YouTube in August of 2009. He met Jeremy Rose, a producer with an idea for a dark modern R&B project the next year. Rose played one of his instruments for Chisfaye, who freestyle rapped over it, after first pitching the concept to artist Curtis Santiago. His true identity was unclear at first. The tracks gained traction on the internet and were eventually included in a blog post by rapper Drake. Several media publications, including Pitchfork and the New York Times, covered the tracks after that. Tesfaye performed songs under two names before being known as The Weeknd, The Noise, and Kin Kane. He embarked on his first international tour in April 2012, which included appearances at Coachella, sold-out shows at the Bowery Ballroom in New York City, which were praised by Rolling Stone, and performances at various European festivals. He signed with Republic Records in September, and EXO became a subsidiary label. Furthermore, Tesfaye released Trilogy on November 13, 2012, a compilation album that included remixed and remastered versions of his 2011 mixtapes, as well as three new songs. On the three tracks from House of Balloons, for which he was not previously given credit, the album officially recognized Rose as a producer and writer. Moreover, he released the title track of his first studio album, Kiss Land, on May 17, 2013, and confirmed the album's September 10th release date. With 96,000 copies sold, the album opened at number 2 on the Billboard 200 and garnered generally excellent reviews from music reviewers. 2021-2012 Tesfaye released his second greatest hits album, The Highlights, on February 5, 2021. Tesfaye's highest charting compilation album and the strongest first week debut for a greatest hits album since fully loaded God's Country opened at number 2 on the US Billboard 200. On February 7, 2021, Tesfaye performed in the Super Bowl 55 halftime show, making him the first Canadian artist to do so. 
Don FM, Tess Faye's fifth studio album, was released on January 7, 2022. With 148,000 copies sold, the album opened at number two on the Billboard 200, marking Tess Faye's eighth top ten entry and his second non-consecutive number two debut. With 24 tracks on the Billboard Global 200, he also set a new record for the most simultaneous entries by a male solo artist. Alright guys, that's all we have from us today. Do be sure to like, comment and subscribe to our channel if you enjoyed this video. See you next time.